Chapter one in the beginning was the persecution. In order to understand the historical origin of Christianity, one dominant fact must be understood. This fact is that to this day, there is no historical data or biography in existence to substantiate the life and times of Jesus the Christ. As John L. McKenzie S.J. states in his book, Dictionary of the Bible, page 432, the writing of the life of Jesus has been the, pro- the major problem of New Testament scholarship for more than 100 years. After numerous shifts of opinion, the consensus of scholars is that the life of Jesus cannot be written. The reason is that the data for a historical biography do not exist. The only sources of the life and teachings of Jesus are the four Gospels. The contents of the apocryphal Gospels are historically worthless. The meaning of the word apocryphal is fictitious books of uncertain authorship, such as the four apocryphal gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But the main reason for not having historical data or a biography for Jesus the Christ is because there has never been a man that ever walked the earth in human form of any race, creed, or color by the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go a little deeper and find out how, when, and where did this created icon, image, known as Jesus Christ, come about. It started with the invasion of Alexander the Greek in Egypt in 332 BCE, at which time he removed the existing pharaoh, governor, and put himself in his place. At that time, at that, at the same time, he demanded that ancient Egyptian priest society relate to him as a god and give him priest status and accept him into their sacred institutions, which would have given him legitimacy. His demands were rejected because the ancient Egyptians did not worship human form. They paid homage to their ancestors and nature. They were also in tune with the universal spiritual consciousness, a direct spiritual link with the creator. Alexander and the later Ptolemies and the Romans knew that in order to rule Egypt and its people, they had to be accepted and made part of the ancient Egyptian sacred society. However, the ancient Egyptians considered Alexander a spirit. They considered Alexander a spiritually out of tune, uncivilized European alien, and therefore his efforts were rejected. Also, there is no evidence to suggest that the ancient Egyptians accepted persons of other races or cultures into their sacred priest society, and thus Alexander's demand that they receive him as a god was the world's first form of European racial supremacy, i.e. racism. At the time of Alexander's death in 323 BCE, Ptolemy I Lagi also called Soter, took over the rule of Egypt. It is very important to know that the word Soter means savior, a title given to Ptolemy I Lagi as a result of his military conquest. The word savior plays a significant role in the evolution of the created image called Jesus Christ and the man-made non-spiritual religion called Christianity. Ptolemy I Soter, like Alexander, also tried to get himself accepted into the ancient Egyptian priest society. He was also rejected for the same reason as Alexander. At this time in history, 320 BCE, Ptolemy I Soter sought out and found a council of ancient Egyptian priests and priestesses in Memphis, Egypt, who agreed to make him who agreed to make his image into a god. These Melkite Coptic Egyptians complied with Ptolemy I's request and made him a and made a composite using two of their ancient Egyptian gods, Osiris and the sacred bull of Memphis, Apis. And during this process came up with the name Osirapis, later Serapis. They then gave the name Osirapis to Ptolemy I and gave his image the assimilated characteristics of their ancient Egyptian ancestor, Osiris, thereby making Ptolemy I and his image a god. They later created a devotional ritual to Serapis. 
He was spoken of as the savior and leader of souls, leading souls to the light and receiving them again. The ritual goes on to say he raises the dead. He will save us after death and we will be protected in his providence. See Serapis, The Outline of History by H.G. Wells, Volume 1. Today, the same thing is being said about his created image called Jesus Christ, who has a created birth date of 4 BCE and a created death date of 28 or 30 A BCE. Allow me to emphasize that it was our ancestors, the Coptic Melkite Egyptians, who created the image of Serapis. This, in effect, was to be used later to create the religion of Christianity by giving the Serapis icon image a human nature through a diophysitic union, which was officially done at the Council of Ephesus in 431 ABCE. After the Melkite Coptic Egyptian priests and priestesses in the Temple of Memphis, Egypt, fulfilled Ptolemy I's request and provided him an image of himself into a god, man-made religion, not universal spiritual consciousness as practiced by the ancient Egyptians, came into existence for the first time in human history. Ptolemy I attempted to put his man-made icon image of himself into all the sacred temples throughout Egypt alongside the ancient Egyptian god Osiris. This was his way of getting himself accepted into the ancient Egyptian priesthood. However, as previously mentioned, this devious scheme of Ptolemy's was rejected by the entire sacred priest society throughout Egypt, except in Memphis, Egypt, where the name Serapis and icon image were created. Angered by this rejection, Ptolemy I Soter proceeded to close all the other sacred ancient Egyptian temples throughout Egypt and made it against the law for any ancient Egyptian to build any temples or buildings for the purpose of spiritual fellowship. The closing down of our ancestors' tem sacred temples during the reign of Ptolemy I Soter completely eliminated the last of the pharaonic sacred institutions of ancient Egypt. This was the beginning of the erosion of the spiritual unity that the ancient Egyptian priesthood had tried to keep in place throughout Egypt during Egypt's occupation by the Greeks. The passing of this law forced the priests and priestesses to use their homes for spiritual purposes. The law stayed in effect until the time of the Roman ruler Justinian I, who in 543 ACE, along with his wife Theodora, financed and built the world's first Coptic Christian monophysite church in Syria, today called the uh, Jacobite Church. This church was built and later named for Jacob Baradeus, a.k.a. James Barade, the Coptic Egyptian quasi monophysite Christian who was appointed by Theodora to evangelize among the European Arabs. From monophysite Christianity, the pagan religion of Mohammedanism, a.k.a. Islam, was created. The Jacobite church followers only recognized the Osiris-like characteristics in the created image of the Serapist Christ icon and thereby did not accept or recognize a human nature in this man-created icon. The followers in the church were called Jacob, Jacobite monophysites. Subsequent to the closing of our ancestors' sacred temples throughout Egypt, Ptolemy I Soter confiscated all of their divine and sacred-inspired writings, which were written on papyrus scrolls, and proceeded to store them in the one remaining temple in Memphis, Egypt. This was the temple where his image had been made into the pagan god Serapis. Every Ptolemy ruler and then later Roman rulers of Egypt sat on the throne of Egypt and became the vicar of Serapis, just as the Roman Catholic Pope of today sits on the throne of Peter in the Vatican and passes himself off as the vicar of the created image called Jesus Christ. It was Ptolemy I, Soter's grandson, Ptolemy III, Eurydice I, who built the Serapium Temple, an annex building in Alexandria, Egypt, in 240 BCE. Today, this annex building is known in history as the Great Library of Egypt. This annex building became the Great Library of Egypt when Ptolemy III, Eurydice I, transferred the ancient Egyptian divine scrolls into this annex building after removing them from the old temple in Memphis, Egypt, where his grandfather, Ptolemy I Soter, previously stored them. Thus, the annex became the Great Library of Egypt. This 
This refutes the lie that is told about Alexander the Greek building the Great Library of Egypt to house the supposed thousands of books of the fictitious Aristotle, his supposed teacher. Aristotle is deemed fictitious because the Greeks during the time of antiquity did not have an alphabet nor institutions. After removing the sacred scroll scrolls from the old temple in Memphis, Egypt, Ptolemy III, Eurgetes I, began to tear down the old temple to make way for the new temple he was to erect in Memphis, Egypt to honor Serapis, called the Dionysian Temple. As we go further, you will see the significance of the annex building and the development of the man-made pagan religion called Christianity. As you follow Serapis throughout the Greek occupation of Egypt, you will find another significant development in the creation of Christianity. At this time in history, 197 to 196 BCE, the Melkite Copts began to worship Serapis as a god and at the same time giving honor to Ptolemy V Epiphanes, Eucharistos, the vicar of Serapis. The worship of Serapis and the honor given to Ptolemy V Epiphanes was created by a new generation of Melkite Coptic Egyptians who comprised the general council of priests and priestesses in the Dionysian temple in Memphis, Egypt. This honor to Ptolemy V was created to celebrate the first commem commemoration of the coronation of Ptolemy V, the king of Egypt, and to give thanks for the many favors given by him to the Melkite priest society. The commemoration ceremony also established in history the religious ritual called the Eucharist. This ritual was also made part of Ptolemy V's Epiphany's title, which was Eucharistos. This honor, the Eucharist, became the first order of service set aside in the religious temples that honored Serapis, such as the Dionysian Temple in Memphis, Egypt, the Serapium in Alexandria, Egypt, and the Temple of Serapis in Canopus, as well as military installations throughout the land area ruled by the Ptolemies and later the Romans. This Eucharist, bestowed upon Ptolemy V, Epiphanes, and Serapis, is still being used today by the Roman Catholic Church in its opening ritual service called the Mass or Communion Service. The, Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church, through its teachings of Christian theology, has deceived the world population by teaching the believer to believe that the ritual called the Consecrated Eucharist, which was a ritual created by the Diphasitic Coptic Egyptian Christians, is the Lord's Last Supper, i.e. Serapis slash Christ, surrounded by 12 other European images at the banquet table, supposedly eating the Last Supper. This Eucharist was commemorated to Ptolemy V Epiphanes, Eucharistos, and the image of Serapis has nothing to do with today's meaning of the consecrated Eucharist. The question has to be asked, how was the ritual originally used? During and after the commemoration to Ptolemy V Epiphanes and Serapis, the Melkite Coptic the Melkite Egyptian priesthood and the Greek occupants of Egypt gave recognition to Serapis and Ptolemy V Epiphanes by celebrating the Eucharist in their homes during the usual hour of dinner or late afternoon supper. To them, this was a time to be thankful and grateful to Serapis and Ptolemy V Epiphanes, the vicar of Serapis, for the many favors bestowed by Ptolemy V Epiphanes in the name of Serapis. To make way for this strong commemoration to Ptolemy V Epiphanes and Serapis, the Melkite Egyptian priesthood at Memphis removed all of the other remaining ancient Egyptian deities from the three temples honoring Serapis. This left only the Serapis icon image to be worshipped. This elite Melkite bougie class of Coptic Egyptians were like their brethren before them. The council of priests and priestesses who destroyed our beloved Osiris and Apis and created this European icon of Serapis during the reign of Ptolemy I, Soter, using his image to do so. They were a group of traitors who betrayed our ancient ancestors for a few crumbs and favors from the uncivilized savages, Greeks, and later the heathen Romans, thereby separating themselves from the masses. The honor to Ptolemy V Epiphanes Eucharistos is being used to this day in the Roman Catholic Church and other religious institutions and is called the Epiphany or Little Christ or Little Christmas. It is celebrated from December 26th through January 6th, which is called the 12th night. 
This explains the historical origin of the Epiphany, the same type of commemoration that was given to Ptolemy V. Epiphanies has been given previously to Ptolemy III, Euergetes I and 230 and 238 BCE by the same council of Melkite Coptic Egyptian priests and priestesses. However, apotheosizing the image of Serapis by using the ritual of the Eucharist was never accepted by the exterior Coptic religious community, only by the Melkite Copts who went along with the Greeks and later the Romans for whatever reasons. The next important step in the understanding of the pagan religion called Christianity is the historical time era of the five council meetings that transformed and made this created spiritless creature Serapis into the Messiah, the Christos, the Christ. The five council meetings I'm referring to are the Council of Nicaea I, 325 ABCE, the Council of Constantinople I, 381 ABCE, the Council of Ephesus, 431 ABCE, the Council of Chalcedon, 451 ABCE, and the Council of Constantinople II, 553 ACE. I will give an overview of these events by explaining what went on at each council meeting. Make note of the fact that these council meetings were convened by the Melkite Egyptian ancestors for the sole purpose of apotheosizing and making this creature and making this created creature Serapis into the Messiah and a God for the European world community and also to destroy the strong opposition from our exterior Coptic Egyptian ancestors. During this time in his in history, any member of the exterior Coptic Egyptian religious community was called an Arianist or a monophysite. Now let's investigate to develop an understanding of what our ancestors did at each of these council meetings to cause the creation of Christianity and the image of Serapis to become the Messiah, the Christos, the Christ. However, before doing so, it is important to discuss the three historical events that caused the first council, the Council of Nicaea I in 325 ABCE, to be called. First, the Donatist schismatic controversy. Second, the donation of Constantine. Third, the strong statement by Arius. Each event is discussed in the following chapter.